What's up Trailblazers? This is Kalem with another guide. Blade is the first unit that comes out in patch 1.2. So if you're thinking about pulling Blade, I want to make sure that you are prepared and ready to go when he comes out. Let's start off with an overview of Blade's skills. His basic attack is just a regular basic attack, but there's an enhanced version of his basic attack that deals extra damage and also does cleave damage. The thing that activates his enhanced basic attack is his skill. He goes into Hellscape form, and that gives you an enhanced basic attack for X turns. His skill likely boosts his damage as well, because Hellscape is a buff state. Both his enhanced basic and his skill consumes HP. Blade's ultimate is a huge nuke that also does cleave damage. It sets your HP to 50%, and the more HP that you've lost, the more damage you do. This is likely capped or resets, because over the course of a battle, you could be losing up to 100,000 HP, so Hoyoverse likely put some restrictions in place. Blade's talent is what helps him become more self-sufficient. Whenever you lose HP, you gain a stack. A follow-up attack triggers at 5 stacks, and this follow-up attack also heals Blade himself. What this means is that after you use his skill, his basic attack, and his ultimate, he'll probably have enough stacks of his talent to automatically trigger without even being attacked. Because Blade's kit is so well-rounded, it's actually hard to find anything that stands out. His basic attack, skill, ultimate, talent all would contribute to his performance. So I would actually recommend leveling all of them up equally. If I had to give a priority, I would say basic and skill is slightly more important than talent and ultimate because Blade's talent and ultimate are not reliable sources of damage. Certain conditions have to be met to maximize the damage of his talent and ultimate. When it comes to light cones, what you want for Blade is HP and damage. Unfortunately, the only light cone that gives both HP and damage is his 5 star light cone on his banner. Unreachable side is tailor made for Blade. If you don't want to go for his 5 star light cone, you can use the 4 star light cone, Secret Vow. Secret Vow provides an unconditional amount of damage increase to your character. If Blade's HP percentage is lower than the enemy he's targeting, Secret Vow gives him an additional damage bonus on top of the baseline damage bonus. And coming in third is Fall of the Eon. Fall of the Eon requires Super Imposition 5 to be effective, and even then, Blade has to be the person who breaks the enemy weakness to trigger the damage bonus. Because Unreachable Side is hard to get, and Fall of the Eon is conditional, I recommend Secret Vow for most players. Now let's talk about Relics. The new Relic set, Longevous Disciple, is made for destruction characters. The 2-piece bonus gives HP, which synergizes with Blade's damage scaling. The 4-piece bonus gives crit rate on HP loss. Pretty much every element of Blade's kit has an element of HP loss, so this 4-piece bonus is very easy to trigger. I recommend a crit damage chest to maximize Blade's damage. However, a crit damage chest requires that you have decent crit rate substats. If you don't have good crit rate substats, you might just want to go with a crit rate chest. For boots, I recommend HP for the most damage. Blade is a type of character that doesn't take many turns, but on each of his turn, he deals a lot of damage. You could put speed boots on Blade as well to make him a better breaker, but it's likely to be less damage than HP boots. For planetary ornament, you want to use the new Rutan Arena set. This ornament set gives crit rate, which is good for Blade's damage, and also helps improve Blade's main source of damage, which is his enhanced basic attack. For the rope, you want to use HP percentage. For substats, you're looking for three different attributes. You're looking for HP percentage, crit rate, and crit damage. Lastly, there's a chance that Inner Salsado could also be good on Blade. Depending on Traces and Eidolons, Blade's damage from his alt and follow-up attack could be very significant, in which case you want to use Inner Salsado if you have those Eidolons. Because Blade is very self-sufficient, he's a very flexible character that can fit into many different team comps. His main role is a sub-DPS. The reason that Blade is not the main carry is that current Harmony characters do not synergize with Blade at the moment, all the characters enhance attack in some way, which does not scale super well with Blade. Take Ting Yun for example. Ting Yun's ult is great with Blade, but Ting Yun's skill is not effective. If you have a hyper carry team with Blade, he will do a lot of damage. The reason I don't recommend it is that some of his support skills and abilities will be wasted. So what do I recommend instead? You can pair Blade with a passive healer like Bailu or Luocha. Bailu's invigoration and Luocha's healing field makes Blade very easy to use. For the last two slots on your team, you can choose your favorite two carry and support combo. So this could be Zila and Silverwolf, this could be Jin Yuan and Ting Yun, it could be Su Sheng and Welt. Basically, you can choose your main carry and the support that best fits them. I think in the future, Blade could become a hyper carry when Hoyoverse releases more supports that synergize with him better. But for now, Blade is the second carry on your team. 
Lastly, you do not want to put Blade with shield characters. Blade is a character that wants to lose health, so shields are very anti-synergy with Blade. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.